Hello, today we're going to be discussing simple and fractional distillation. Okay, so here is the apparatus that we use for simple distillation. And what you need is a flask with a heat source because the heat is going to heat up your solution, break those intermolecular forces, and as the intermolecular forces are broken, we're going to create a vapor of the solution that we're trying to get. So what we want to get out is our alcohol. So we're going to heat the solution up to about 70 to 80 degrees. Let's go with about 79 degrees. And that should get the alcohol to move into its vapor state and it's going to move out and down. And as it's moving down the water jacketed condenser, the purpose of this is water is being pumped in through the double walled layer and as water is being pumped in, it's going to chill the vapor, and the vapor will then recondense, forming a liquid, and then it can be collected in the graduated cylinder. So again, as far as the apparatus goes, fractional distillation is about the same idea. Um, we're going to add glass beads this time, however, because the glass beads uh, allow there to be some surface area for the distillate to stick to. And when the distillate starts to form on the glass beads, some of it's going to recondense because that's going to give it an area where it's not so hot and it's going to chill and it's going to recondense. But the one that's going to recondense faster is the one with the higher boiling point because it's going to be cooling down essentially. So that's going to be our water. So as though the water sits there long enough, it's going to recondense and fall back in to the flask and that's great because we don't actually want the water in the solution that's the whole purpose of the distillation at the end we just want alcohol and since we just want the alcohol and this glass beads are kind of taking care of that for us this is a more efficient way of distilling it's as though we're doing multiple simple distillations at the same time so the purpose of the thermometer and our apparatus is that as distillate is moved and transferred back into its liquid form and you're collecting it in the graduated cylinder, we can check on the temperature and see at what temperature the vapor is moving through the column. And we see a correlation between the simple and the fractional distillation that we can see in this chart that at about 8 milliliters there's a spike in temperature. You can see it about here. And that spike in temperature is because we've reached the threshold of the boiling point for the alcohol. And then the temperature is going to have to increase if it wants to boil any more distillate. But the distillate at that point is going to have water in it because the higher we raise the temperature, the more water is likely to boil. And here's why. So the bonds in water are actually very strong because of the intermolecular forces. So hydrogen is a much less electronegative chemical than, say, oxygen or carbon in our ethane. And because of that, the charges on hydrogen are going to go towards carbon because hydrogen, again, is less electronegative. But as they're doing that, we also have the alcohol part of it that is going to be a more electronegative, and it's going to pull away the charge from the carbon. And with the water, it's more of a balanced system. So we have the hydrogen and the oxygen in a symbiotic relationship where the oxygen is sharing um, electrons with hydrogen to form its octet, and everyone's kind of happy. Whereas in the alcohol group, there's push and pull on both sides. So while both compounds are polar, the water molecule is more balanced and the bonds are stronger. And that's why it requires more energy in the form of heat to break the bonds. And that's why alcohol will boil at a lower temperature. It requires less heat energy. So going back to our chart, the whole purpose of this experiment was to get the alcohol away from the water, to purify it essentially. We wanted just the alcohol alone. And you can see from this chart here that at a certain point, the temperature 
has to get very high to continue to boil the solution. And that's because we have reached um, a point where we have done all of the alcohol and there's only water left. So as we continue to keep distilling from that point, it is no longer pure alcohol. Now there will have uh, it'll have water in it, which would be an impurity in this case because the point was to get the water out. So in conclusion, you would do a distillation if you had a solution with two molecules in it that had boiling points that were uh, relatively different, so that way you could manipulate them. And you would need a hot plate, you would need a round bottom flask for boiling, you would need your thermometer to measure your temperature, your jacketed condenser with your water going in and water going out so that way it's circulating and keeping cool. You would need a graduated cylinder to collect your sample and if you wanted this to be efficient you would want to add the glass beads so that way there would be surface area for your molecules to grab onto and that way you wouldn't have to do more than one distillation because remember that provides surface area and the water molecules will touch the glass beads they will recondense and they will fall back into your solution and you will get that nice amount of in this case alcohol coming out and you won't have to do more than one distillation